of this world, the king of all worlds, the king of kings. And John put his head upon his breast. He leaned on the lion of the tribe of Judah. John was weeping when he saw this revelation and he saw all the wickedness and he saw the evil and he he wept much because there was nobody. He saw nobody. Nobody was found that was worthy to open the book. But then the scripture says, the lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed to open the book. He couldn't open that book without the seals being released one at a time. And you can see it. You can see as the seals are being released. You can see it. God holding back right now his anger. He's holding back his wrath. He's holding back his judgment. But I'll tell you right now, folks, even God will not be able to hold back much longer. You say, Brother Joseph, he's God. He can do anything. No, listen. God wants to set up his kingdom. He's longing to set up his kingdom. When you're longing to do something, eventually you just, you can't hold back anymore. And even God, even God, that is God, can do anything. Even the Lord. I don't want to say he has a breaking point because I don't want to say that God is weak in any way. If God has any weakness at all, it's love. If, if God's guilty of anything, it's love. And so if you want to say God is weak because he can't hold back his emotions, be, oh, God doesn't have any emotions, Brother Joseph. What are you talking about? God's a spirit. He made us in his image, in his likeness. Of course he's got emotions. What do you think it is when you see uh, storms and things happening on the earth? That's God's emotions. God gets emotional. What do you think it's happening when all creation is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of God's sons? He's very emotional. But God has his emotions in check. Do you know that scripture I was teaching you yesterday where it says to not shrink back? That's what that word means, the word shrink. Not to shrink back. It means not to put a check on yourself. There comes a place where you can't hold back anymore. You can't withhold anymore. John uh, or J- uh, Jeremiah tried to. He said, I was weary with withholding. He said, it was like fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't hold it back anymore. This is different. This is not like holding back like Jeremiah. This is like holding back rivers. This is like holding back oceans. This is like holding back... Folks, if you could only understand... Out of the, our belly shall flow rivers, not a river, rivers of living water, a torrent out of our belly, out of our innermost being. Listen, the kingdom of God does not come in observation. It's within us. The kingdom of God being expressed or being made manifest through us. That's why we're consumed. That's why uh, mortality is swallowed up in life because it's not coming from the outside. It's coming from the inside out. Praise God. The Lord is on the inside. He's coming out, praise God. He's expressing himself and he's manifesting himself through the temple, through his temple. And we're to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Is Christ in you? Is Christ really in you? Is Jesus really in your heart? Is there life in your heart? Is there that incorruptible seed that's more powerful than any nuclear weapon that's on the inside, that's not unstable, that does not require a cooling? Does it require a cooling? Is there a cooling from the Word of God? Does God keep Himself cool? I, Folks, listen. When the Bible speaks of meekness, meekness is not weakness. Meekness is strength under control. People say, oh, well, can't God hold back any longer? What's his problem? I thought he was God. You don't want to tempt him. 
You, you don't want to provoke him to anger. You don't want to be a brand in the fire, a fire poker that's stirring up God's anger. You don't want to be one of those that's in the fire, a, a, a stick in the fire. You want to be one that's plucked from the burning, spared. Don't be one in this hour that's stirring up God's anger, that's provoking God to anger. Don't be one that's poking at God. Satan loves to poke fun, he, or not really fun, but poking. He loves to poke. Poke it on Jesus while he was on the cross, sticking a sword in his side, poking at him. The world loves to poke. They love to prod. Scientists poking and prodding. This halogen collider, poking and prodding it, what they call the God particle. They're pro poking and prodding at God. How dare they? They'll be met with the wrath of God. Wouldn't surprise me a bit if that collider doesn't explode and take everybody with it that's in, involved in that project. God's not playing games. You play with fire, you get burned. Gee, what I said? And that's not just talking about big hydrogen colliders either. That's talking about taking a woman into your bosom that's not your wife. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Oh, this is the right one, Joseph, uh, Brother Joseph. This, this, this woman is the right one. I remember one time I prayed and I said, God, should I marry this woman? Before I married my wife, I said, God, should I marry this woman? He said, you can if you want to. And I took that as a yes. Boy, did I get burned. I get burned bad. You get burned enough. Listen, the pain doesn't ever go away. But you start to get calloused. It's not ca the same kind of callousness as far as the heart being coming callous. No, that gets more and more sensitive. But you're, it, there's got to be a callous that builds up against pain. And we can get calloused against, uh, as far as pain. But you, you're still going to feel it. Might not feel as bad. Might not hurt. Might not sting as bad. But you're still going to feel it. Oh, Jesus. Praise your holy name, Lord. How could people be, be being burned at the stake? under Nero and rejoicing as they're being burned you talk about being praise God callous to pain only Jesus can protect us from pain I remember the other night when the devil came and tried to attack me the first time he came to get he came to attack me I was reeling the second time he came it was like nothing barely bothered me and I heard a testimony, I don't remember who it was, how that Satan came and sat at the foot of the bed of this individual. And the, the man woke up, looked up and said, oh, it's just you, devil, went back to sleep. We can come to that place, people, in God. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hear about this minister that goes over to Africa, to missionary goes over to Africa while he's in Africa. He's uh, praying one night before the service and all the voodoo witch doctors got together and they were praying. And he said all of a sudden the curtain in the room began to move and all of a sudden this stench came into the room. This presence came into the room and moved his bed. Tried to scare him. And uh, he said, Devil, when you came in here, he said the bed was over there. He said, put it back. He said, all of a sudden the curtains begin to move. That stench came back into the room again. And the bed was back over where it belonged. That's right. Jesus Christ gave you and I authority over the devil. We just don't know it. We don't recognize it. We don't believe it. 
what he did. He's given us all power over the power of the enemy. Nothing by any means shall harm us. Why does the devil, why is he railing against church? Why is the devil overcoming the church today as much as he is? Because the church doesn't know who they are. They don't know whose they are. They don't know the authority they have in Christ. And I say that to their shame. It's sad. And it's simply because they don't believe the word of God. We have all authority over the devil. He has no power. Not only don't, did Jesus give us all authority over the devil, he's given us all power. Deutimus, power. People. Amen? It should be the devil that's on the run. Amen. Should be the devil on the run. Shouldn't be the other way around. For years now, the church has been on the run. No, it's time for the devil, amen, to flee. Why isn't he fleeing, Brother Joseph? Because we're not submitting ourselves to the Lord. Submit yourself to God and then resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Well, you, if you're not submitted to God, don't even bother resisting because you're just wasting your time. No, you've got to be submitted first. You've got to be grounded before you can resist the devil. It's not your power that resists Satan. It's God's power. It's you and I do, do, that do the grounding part. It's you and I that humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. I'm not looking for the devil to beat me up, folks. I'm looking to beat the devil up. I'm, lo I'm looking to beat the, 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 uh, the, the devil. Amen? Hallelujah. Maybe it sounds strange to you, brothers and sisters, what you're hearing right now. I'll tell you, there are some Holy Ghost. They're being full, be, being filled in fullness to the fullness of the Holy Ghost with their words, are spirit and life, not their own words. At this juncture right now, at this place, the spirit and the bride say, come. Hey, if you're not giving that invitation, you're on the other end, receiving it. You're either going to give the invitation, or you're going to receive the invitation, or you're going to reject it. You can't have both. You're either giving the invitation, come, all that are thirst and drink of the water of life, or you're on the other end, hearing the invitation, or you're rejecting it. Can't have it both ways, people. Hallelujah. And by the way, that invitation is not to the wedding. It's to the marriage feast. Those are guests to the marriage feast. That's the, that's the invitation of the bride. The spirit and the bride say come. 